Now, in recent years, more and more governments on both the local and national levels are enacting laws and regulations penalizing companies and other entities that either boycott Israel or support the so-called BDS movement, usually by banning them from receiving government contracts, cooperation, or investment. Now, such a law is currently moving through the British Parliament, and this month, New Hampshire became the 37th state in the U.S. to enact such a law. Now, naturally, BDS supporters oppose a law which finds them the target of a ban rather than the Jewish state. But while most mainstream Jewish organizations support such measures, there are Jewish groups and individuals, even among supporters of Israel, who oppose BDS in principle, who are uncomfortable with these laws, agreeing with those civil rights groups who argue that they unfairly limit freedom of expression and legitimate protest. So on today's Jewish Forum, we ask, are anti-BDS laws the right way to fight BDS? And joining us from our studio in Tel Aviv, we have Danielle Beth, Director of Communications for the group Yachad. Uh, from Washington, D.C., we have Arno Rosenfeld, an investigative reporter uh, for the publication The Forward. And joining us uh, uh, from uh, Japan, we have Nitsana Darshan Leitner, president of the Shurat Hadin Law Center. And Danielle, I'm going to start with you because Yachad, you, Yachad, have spoken out against the law making its way through parliament. Why is that? So we do oppose the BDS bill, and I think the way that initially this question was framed is whether you are in favor or against BDS, whereas actually this is not the question at hand. First of all, it's a question of whether this law truly aims to tackle BDS, and the law states that it's trying to also improve co community cohesion in the UK. Um, first of all, the law is not doing that. On the contrary, there is a huge argument in the Jewish community in the UK. It's not um, just kind of left-wing groups that oppose this law. Um, the law has far wider reaching measures than just Israel and Palestine. Furthermore, it's not just trying to tackle boycotts of what we would consider to be Israel proper, so Israel within the Green Line, but also any um, non-violent measures, so boycotts or sanctions of the settlements, which kind of contradicts UK government policy. Um, and lastly, one of the aims of this law is to tackle anti-Semitism, which we do not see in which way this is going to protect Jewish communities. And it's important to remember this law is not to ban BDS everywhere, but specifically in public bodies, so for example, local councils in the United Kingdom. Uh, Nitsana, your group has uh, uh, been at the forefront of uh, supporting such laws. Maybe uh, resp why you think they are effective and maybe answer some of the points that Danielle raised, even the more general points that people say there's not enough distinction made between uh, BDS of uh, uh, Jewish settlements uh, and, and Israel proper, and the bigger question of whether they limit free speech. Well, first of all, this law is only part of the picture. Our organization is fighting BDS, is fighting those who delegitimize the Jewish state and boycott it, uh, and violating U.S. law and other anti-discrimination laws. Um, and uh, these state laws that are being enacted in the United States and soon in Britain are only part of this war. It's unlegitimate. Uh, a step to boycott Israel, not only to boycott the uh, uh, territories, uh, but also boycotting Israel. There is no difference between these two uh, in terms of, uh, of boycotting, and um, our goal is to fight it. The laws, um, you should know, are very legitimate. First of all, BDS, as uh, people, uh, those who are against this law's uh, claim, uh, are not uh, legitimate speech and they're not protected speech. There is no right to boycott Israel. There is no right to call to boycott Israel. It's not uh, a defended speech, it's not protected speech. Second, the, uh, what the governments are doing, what these states are doing, are basically saying, if you boycott Israel, we are not giving you grants. We are not going to uh, have business relationship with you. 
Uh, once again, these are not for uh, granted. Grants are not uh, uh, for granted. Nobody has the right to receive a grant. Um, there are conditions to be met for someone that wants to receive a grant. And one of the conditions that this states um, uh, state is not to boycott Israel. Very legitimate, very uh, common, and uh, therefore the, the laws should be uh, continued and should be protected. Right, and, and Arno, you've covered this issue as a journalist, and you could see there are, I, again, this is not a debate about BDS, it's about specifically these anti-BDS uh, these anti -BDS laws, and there is a division here within Jewish communities, uh, how to deal with that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and, you know, it's important to note that the BDS movement itself, the, the movement uh, which, you know, has a website, a national committee has stated goals, uh, has been a pretty unsuccessful movement. They've racked up a few victories on college campuses. It's been going for 15 years um, and it hasn't been making much progress. But these laws target much more than the BDS movement. They target, as was mentioned, settlements. So if you were, say, a catering company that didn't want to serve wine from Israeli settlements in the West Bank, which is something that many Israelis uh, don't do, that many Jewish Zionists in the United States choose not to purchase products from the settlement, uh, you would risk forfeiting your contracts with state or local governments that have enacted these laws. Uh, I think it's also interesting to hear, you know, as the only uh, panelist from the United States, uh, calling for a boycott is absolutely protected speech. So what we're seeing in the United States is groups saying that these laws are not intended to stop the speech. You're still allowed to call for a boycott. You're still allowed to advocate for a boycott of Israel. You simply can't, as a vendor or a company that a state government is going to invest in, you can't take economic action against the state of Israel, which sets up this really strange untenable uh, legal landscape where you as a vendor would have to sign a statement saying, I pledge not to boycott Israel, even though on the weekend you're free to go to a protest where you're calling for a boycott of Israel. We haven't really seen a legal test of what that's going to look like in practice, but it's a very messy landscape. And I think that's why some groups that are friendly to Israel and individuals who are friendly to Israel are still concerned about some of these laws. All right. I want to go back to Daniel, maybe to answer some of the points that Nitsana has raised. One is that Governments make, as she says, make all kinds of conditions on the people, on, on, on organizations or businesses they do business with. You can't discriminate against certain ethnic groups, against certain religions. Some would argue the Jewish state falls uh, 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 in that category uh, as well. Your response, Danielle? So I think especially from the UK legislation, which is currently in motion point of view, it's not preventing individuals from boycotting Israel. The right to boycott, the right to call for boycott still exists and will continue to exist in the UK. We don't know for how long, but it will. This is specifically about local councils where there are a small handful of local councils across the United Kingdom of public bodies who have tried to pass motions boycotting Israel. They've been largely ineffective. BDS has not been effective in local councils. However, this law is targeting them. So yes, the, the government has the right to impose certain um, restrictions, but why is Israel being treated differently? Why only can uh, sanctions not be applied against Israel? And furthermore, the UK government states that settlements are an obstacle to peace, that they are an obstacle to the two-state solution, and that they are illegal under international law, and at the same time are preventing people from stating, even in local councils, that they would wish to uh, boycott settlements. Right. Well, uh, I want to give Nitsana a, uh, a chance to comment on that. And also uh, on, the, on the argument that BDS, the, B, the BDS movement is not, has not been that effective and the anti-BDS laws maybe even create some, uh, I won't say sympathy for them, but maybe uh, raises an issue that, in, that hurts the, those that are opposing BDS more than helping. The BDS movement is really, really, really illegitimate. You don't understand. If those who want to boycott Israel uh, are doing it sincerely from humanitarian reasons or from uh, caring about violation of human rights, how come they don't go and boycott Saudi Arabia and boycott China?
China and boycott Iran, where the human rights violation is so uh, um, brief and so um, so so crazy over there. Just forgot the uh, word in English. But you see that by boycotting Israel, they have one goal: to delegitimize the Jewish state from anti-Semite reasons. And this is why any step taken against the BDS movement is legitimate, including these laws. There is no difference between boycotting Judea and Samaria to boycotting Israel, not according to the Israeli law, which legislated the anti-boycott law that specifically put at the same place boycotting Israel and boycotting the territories. They are both uh, violation of the law. And there is no difference according to the U.S. law to these 37 states that now legislated these anti-boycott laws that say specifically if you want to receive money from us as the state, as the government, if you want to collaborate with us, you have to um, put a halt. Right. Anti Discrimination acts that you're taking against the Jewish state. You're not taking it against anybody else, but against okay, the Jewish well, state. Okay, well, I want to... I, to collaborate. I want to go to Arno, and that's the point that many of the, the advocates of such law makes. If somebody is choosing only Israel, the Jewish state, to boycott, even if it is on claims of being it's an occupying power, which other countries are, does that not shade over into anti-Semitism, and therefore these laws are legitimate? It's not, it's not stopping free speech, it's stopping prejudice or discrimination. Yeah, I mean, that's certainly part of the debate in the United States that we're seeing. But I think it's interesting to note that these laws are very selectively enforced. So, for example, when Ben and Jerry's came out with a statement that said they were boycotting, uh, you know, what they called occupied Palestinian territory, the U.N. designation, and trying to stop selling their ice cream in settlements, they were targeted by these laws. And a lot of the advocacy groups in the United States went after them. McDonald's, which franchises in Israel uh, do not open up and set up and do not do business in the settlements, has not been targeted uh, by these laws, even though you could make a plausible argument that it would fall under that. When Morningstar, the financial ratings firm, uh, you know, bought a European company that had a human rights score that marked down Israel alongside many of the other countries that were mentioned, you know, Saudi Arabia, China, uh, they were forced to basically shut down their human rights scoring because it marked down Israel, not because it marked down only Israel, but because it marked down Israel. So we're seeing these laws implemented in a very political way, which I think makes it hard to, we can have the political debate about whether BDS is anti-Semitic or motivated by anti-Semitism or fuels anti-Semitism, but when it comes to the laws, uh, we're we're seeing something uh, pretty inconsistent, which I think is, is notable in the American context. All right. Well, uh, clearly, uh, this is a debate that is going to continue because, as we said, for example, this law is passing through the parliament, the UK parliament, as we speak, the law we've been discussing, and many other US states uh, are considering uh, uh, passing such laws as well. I would like to thank all our guests, uh, Danielle Bett of Yachad, uh, uh, Arno Rosen Rosenfeld of The Forward, and Nitsana Darshan Leitner of the Shurat Haddin Law Center. Thank you all for a uh, informative discussion.